Now this is the country that I am lucky enough to call home. And not only am I lucky enough to call this place home and get out and photograph it, I've actually got my health to be able to go out and see it in great depth. Now from my earlier videos you'll see that these ones are quite similar to the photographs I've taken in the past, but previous videos would see me up at 1500, 1700, 2000 metres above sea level. But these ones are similar but different. And they're different because they've all been taken actually from the roadside. Now this video here is the culmination of the trip that I did last year, summarising all the places that I got to in one video, as I worked, slept, travelled around in a camper van, covering 5,000 kilometres in 10 days, shooting about 10 locations and producing these five or six videos. Welcome to New Zealand and welcome to my playground. Morning everyone, welcome to another video <laughs> with a funny soundtrack. Um, today I was supposed to meet this guy. We sorrow and happiness as one family before God, I now pronounce you Thomas! Oh yes! You made it! <laughs> hey, check out the missus! And this is Byron Cole, who's a professional photographer, professional actor, <laughs> and an all-round funny Funny guy. Now I was supposed to meet him and go for a shoot today at Mount Cook National Park um, but Byron has been locked in with Covid level 3 restrictions up in Auckland so he can't come which is a real shame. But it has freed my day up though. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I'm going to do something I... Uh, this, this one confuses me a little bit because I'm not a big lover of lacy photography and what I mean by that is lacy photography from the car. But driving around here this last few days, it, it makes me realise just how stunning the landscape is in New Zealand. And there's a book here to be had, and the book would be Photography from the Roadside. Because you can get epic shots without going off, off piste and stuff. And I, I think it's actually quite important that um, photography is not just for those who can explore and who can climb hills. Photography is for everyone to be shared. And I think that uh, this here, I'm going to set off from this uh, cafe this morning and head up towards Mount Cook and I'm just going to spend the day starting and stopping, starting and stopping as I get shot, hopefully after shot, after shot. And it's a good illustration that you can get stunning photographs from the roadside. So I've just stopped and I'm going to take what I'm seeing over here. Check for traffic on a <laughs> on a busy uh, New Zealand country road, and I'll show you what I'm seeing. Stopped already. We've not got far up the road. Have the camera. This will be handheld, I think. This will need. So I'm not. Uh, I'm not far away from the cafe, but uh, this is at Lindy's Pass, on the way to uh, Mount Cook. And this is a stunning part of the world. And we're right on the roadside here, as you can see. And what I'm actually seeing here is the contours and the contrast between the light and dark. So it's really important that when you're doing this that I was expecting snow this high up because we're high up here. But uh, this one here, it's really important to visualise your shot properly. So I'm just going to meet it up here. There's cars screaming past, so this will only take 30 seconds. It's really simple. Punch straight in on these contrasted areas in the hills and see how we get on. So this is me punching right in at 160 mils here and I'm at 125th of a second at f7.1 but the key is to leave some of the sky out because this is all about the contours. I'll take one more. 
That's really nice. What I'll maybe do though, is I'm just gonna underexpose this by maybe a stop and a half, just to give me some darkness that I can start working with contrast with. That's actually quite nice. So just a key here, uh, it's really important to visualize that shot, visualize how it's gonna end up and take it in accordance with that. But that, that's actually quite stunning. That's really nice. Now on the way up to Mount Cook National Park, there's actually a couple of places that stop you in your tracks. And this is one of them. And this is Lake Pukaki. And Lake Pukaki is actually this colour because it's fed by glacial water from Mount Cook National Park and two glaciers. And as most people tend to stop here, well I'll do it too, and this is Peter's Lookout. And even on this dull grey day, it's still fantastic. And when here, well it would be rude not to take New Zealand's most photographed scene. So this next set of footage was actually shot only 10 miles and 10 minutes from one of my last videos where I shot Tasman Lake, the glacial lake. And this is simply on the road on the way back to Mount Cook Village. And other than the sound of birds and running glacial water, well here you're actually deafened by the silence. found this green mossy rock with Mount Sefton in the background and this is honestly just off the road. Just so I'm just going to set up a very simple composition. This one in the foreground, bang in the centre probably and probably a square one with this in the back. So I'll try to run this just handheld. But it's just a little bit dark to be able to do it handheld, so I'm going to have to put the tripod on. So, sort of manual. I think I'm around about a thirtieth of a second at f11. To dark, and see the framing up. That'll be quite cool by the time I get that done, and just up in the mountain there, there's some massive massive shelves of ice and I used to think that they were about 50 to 100 meters tall I'm, I'm advised by climbers that they're about three to four hundred meters tall so that's quite incredible quite impressive that's it done good So I'm about 60 or 70 kilometres away from uh, Milford Sound, <laughs> forgot where I was. And this is a shot from the roadside. So this is a car park taken just up the road from Marion Cascades. And what I'm actually seeing here is I'm seeing a mountain away up here shrouded in cloud. So we've got bush in the foreground, we've got big massive mountains here with a light shining on the left hand face here and we've got a mountain that's being hidden currently by the clouds. And the reason I'm doing this with the iPhone, <coughs> excuse me, is I'm currently shooting a time lapse with my vlogging camera. And this is really dark and moody. It's almost like a James Bond scene. I spoke in the big video about patience. And patience here is actually rewarding it, uh, <coughs> rewarding itself. So just on the, um, on the ridge line that's here, it's now starting to catch light from the right hand side. And I think what's going on here is that this, this ridge that's catching the light here is balanced by this white shelf of cloud down here. And the way that I see this is that this line that's over here to the right hand side of black is almost echoed by the line of white to the front causing a little V. And I think placing the, um, the peak 
that was there a few minutes ago off to the left hand side. It's probably going to make this quite a strong composition and we can see just here these are full size trees which indicates the size of these hills. They're massive. They're about three and a half thousand metres almost some of these so this is pretty special but patience has paid off here because the light and the mood is getting better. So the time lapse is finished, as I've just shown you, and it's uh, it's pretty dramatic. Beautiful mountain, framed really well, and just at the end of the time lapse there. It started to cloud in, but patience has paid off because the tip of the mountain is starting to, to make an appearance again. And it's beautiful anyway, but the way that the mountain is now coming alive, plus the framing of the clouds, is making this almost perfect. So I'm going to give it a few more seconds, <laughs> just for that tip, to keep on coming alive, and it's nearly there. I know what I've framed up, so I don't need to look at the camera. I'm looking at the mountain. That's it. <laughs> That's really nice. That's actually really, really nice. New Zealand from the roadside. See what you think. So completing this last leg of the journey, this is where the road gets interesting because the road gets tighter, the mountains appear to get bigger and closer in until they're almost on top of you. And you think that you've got nowhere else to go until you come to Homer Tunnel. And Homer Tunnel's a, a crudely chiselled out tunnel through the rock here. And I think the only purpose of this countdown is probably to add to the anticipation of what lies on the other side. Now I've been all round Europe on a motorbike and I've seen some beautiful reveals coming out of tunnels. But I think this is the most spectacular reveal I think I've ever seen. And it's seriously like being dropped right into the scene of a James Bond movie. That view gets me every time. This is the view just coming out of Homer Tunnel. It's just simply incredible. So the last two hours have really been quite sensational and you would think that you've just had sensory overload. But you've still got 40 minutes to drive. And in that 40 minutes, well, the scenery gets more and more intense. These big hills here on not just one side of the car, but on both sides of the car, giving you some issues about what to take in, what to look at, what to photograph, but what not to photograph as well. And these hills here, for instance, they're a kilometre high of vertical faces of rock. And in the springtime, well, they become just cascades of waterfalls. There is really no bad time to visit this part of New Zealand. And finally there, well, some people would say that it's not about the destination you're in, it's actually about the journey along the way. And I agree with that. But sometimes, just sometimes, it's actually about both. Right, so possibly the last shot for today. This is at Milford Sound. End of the journey. So what I'm looking at is Mitre Peak in the background here. Now this is a very majestic peak at the top of Milford Sound itself. And as you can see the sunlight's really strong today. And try and frame this up. Now this is a tide location, tide's going out. But because there's quite a bit of movement here both in the clouds and the water, I'm actually going to uh, frame this up and do a long exposure with a six stop probably. Just enough to get things moving. 
and this S just off the roadside, the roadside is three meters behind me, honest. So what I've got here is um, the camera set up on portrait with the 45 mm lens on. And I'm at the wider end because I'm just trying to get some, some rocks in the bottom left corner. I'm trying to get the mountain and the sky. And I'll probably place the bottom of the mountain just over halfway. It gives me enough rocks in the foreground that I can crop up. So this is going to be at 45 mil. I'm shooting here at F11. And it's given me around about a hundredth of a second just now. So I'm going to go with a 10 stop filter. So if I take that two, Sixtieth, thirtieth of a second. At F18, thirtieth of a second will actually give me thirty seconds with ten stops. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to punch in and check focus. This is a challenging shot to take because the lights not perfect. And I know I've always said not to take. Uh, I shot in not good light before, but sometimes you just got to do what you can do. Because this is not about getting uh, fine art prints, award-winning gallery shots. This is about taking photographs, because the most important part about doing photography is actually taking photographs. And I will go to manual, fully manual, and I'll go 30 seconds. At F18. So I'm just taking a light meter reading here um, to try and test this. I think I've got some cloud going to disappear behind the clouds just very shortly and I'm getting attacked by sand flies. And these things I'm sure have teeth on their feet. Bloody sore. Now that's really that's quite nice actually. It's it's a little bit bright, but we've got the rocks, we've got some grasses, we've got the line of grass halfway up, we've got layers on the hill. We do get uh, some streaking of the clouds, but again, it's not enough. But I wonder, I wonder if I can do this. And this is not like me to do something in a hurry like this because we've got 30 seconds. I wonder if I can stack these filters. I'm actually going to stack them back to back, which is going to give me 16 stops. So I've got to then go from 30 seconds at F16, but I'll take it back to F11, which takes me back to about 15 seconds. So then we've got 30, one minute, two minute, four minute, eight minute, 15 minute, 15 minute exposure. That's a lot. What I'll do is I'll come back to F9 and I'll go eight minute exposure. And that should be enough then to move the clouds. We'll try this. Now I know I've said not to, to shoot in ideal uh, in non-ideal conditions and be patient. Um, I don't think we're gonna get ideal light today, but I'm only here for a short period of time. And when I'm only here for a short period of time, I've got to make the most of what I can do. So I'll probably end up, bloody sand flies, cropping in quite tight on this and uh, only going just off a square crop. Depending on how the color palette looks when it's done, it might have to be black and white, but black and white will be quite nice. And I'll, uh, I'll, under, I'll undercook this by about a stop, which will give me four minute exposure. And the four minute exposure, come on sand flies, come on. Um, should be enough to move things. I'm quite some distance off that sun. I don't like shooting in the sun, going behind the clouds. Because I have other places to try and get to today. It's either this photograph or no photograph at all. And as I said, the most important part about taking photographs is taking photographs. Now this is a shot that I did take in ideal lighting conditions, but on this trip, I researched the weather, researched the cloud formations, the cloud heights and the tide to get what I think is a stunning image. Now 
that's just over five minutes exposure. I pushed it a little bit more because some of the clouds have, have taken over the sun. And that's actually really nice. Nice and minimalist. It's, um, it's clean, it almost looks like a moonlight shot. So that's been long enough to streak the clouds. I've zoomed in to hide the sun. We've got some sun bleaching down the right hand side. That's okay. That's actually quite nice. So it's off to the next location, wherever that may be. Um, New Zealand from the roadside. It's pretty cool. Thanks for watching everyone, wherever you are. Keep shooting, have fun, and until next time, we'll see you then. Cheerio.